When I took the LSAT, I felt like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I want to help you avoid that. Hey y'all, if you don't know, I'm Nicole and I worked my butt off to achieve a 169 when I took the LSAT last June. I was the kind of student who would wait until the night before to study for a test. I never studied more than 5 minutes for anything labeled a quiz and I would knock out 10 to 20 page papers in anything from 1 to 3 days with very little sleep and believe it or not, no caffeine. Unless chocolate chip cookies at 2 a.m. counts. So the concept of taking a test that could literally shape the course of the rest of my life was a little scary, not just because of the consequences of this test, but because I knew I would have to treat it differently than I had treated anything before. You cannot gram for the LSAT. Now experts recommend a range of three to six months of consistent studying. Think of the level of a part-time job. And I was doing this with a full credit load of courses, and I was in the midst of planning summer vacations, school events, and several academic paper submissions. You could say I was busy. Knowing the things I'm about to share with you would have really helped with my confidence level, time management skills, and study plan. The first thing that I wish I had known before I had taken the LSAT was that I needed to study equally all three sections regardless of my initial proficiency. Let me explain. When I took my diagnostic, I totally guessed on every single logic game question. I had zero idea what I was doing. On the other hand, the logical reasoning and reading comprehension sections seemed more accessible to me. I could come up with a halfway decent way of at least approaching a guess at an answer. I had a concept of how to analytically read a paragraph or consider the fallacies of an argument. I did study English and communication after all. But my panic in one section, contrasting with a halfway decent approach of confidence in the other two, left me with a misconception that I should divide my time proportionately according to my self-perception of proficiency. Don't do that. This is why. Regardless of your initial performance, you need to study each section sufficiently to understand the best way to approach every type of question and answer choice. Honestly, a decent approach and a panicked approach are kind of negligible on test day. They take about the same amount of time and they're both heavily relying on luck. To achieve the highest possible score, you need to replace both those approaches with the best approach, which you can only learn by dividing your time equally among the different sections. Then you can leave any problem areas for each section until the end of your study plan so that they'll be freshest in your mind on the day of the test. The second thing I wish I knew was that my time investment was just as valuable, if not more so, than the financial investment I put into studying for the LSAT. I spent hours upon hours investigating and learning everything I could about how to study, when to study, how long to study, what to study, what to use to study, when to take the LSAT, how to make my own study plan, whose advice to listen to, if I even needed other advice, etc., etc., etc. If anything, that time I spent trying to save money was probably worth a lot more than the money I actually ended up saving. A great example of this is LSAT coaching. My perception of LSAT coaching was spending thousands of dollars to hire a personal tutor to come work through workbooks with you. That was neither feasible nor appealing to me, so I didn't even really look into it. What I didn't learn until after I took the LSAT was that you can literally spend less than $100 and get entire access to an LSAT prep course that covers everything you need to know and was designed by an LSAT coach. Like I said before, I scored a 169 on the LSAT. I know for an actual fact that if I had scored a single point lower in my score, it would have cost me about $70,000 in scholarship money. That sounds drastic, and it is. I am so grateful to be the recipient of an incredible scholarship offer from my dream school that I will be attending this fall. But imagine what the difference of spending an additional $80 to $200 in better LSAT prep in a course like this would have equaled out to for me in scholarship money after the fact. That leads me to the last thing I wish I had known before I took the LSAT. This test is all about your thought process, and if there's one thing it's really difficult to honestly critique and improve, it's the functioning of your thinking that you're using to think about the functioning of your thoughts. 
I wish I would have known the incredible value that comes with someone else observing your thought process or the accountability that comes from comparing the way that you think about logical reasoning, logic games, and reading comprehension to the way that somebody else looking at those same problems does. Feedback is not a tool I had when I was preparing for the LSAT. And this whole channel is about providing the tools and the resources and the advice that I had to fight to find or I didn't get the chance to take advantage of when I was preparing for the LSAT or law school admissions or law school classes. I wanna give those things to you in time for you to use them on your journey, even if I didn't get to use them on mine. I've been working on something for a little while now that I'm finally ready to share with you and it is exactly that, a tool that I did not have but looking back on my experiences, I know that it would have been so helpful and well worth the investment. I am so thrilled and honored to announce that all of these issues that I just spent the last couple minutes telling you about are being addressed in an LSAT prep course that I've partnered up to create together with an amazing LSAT prep coach containing everything that I wish I had known before I took the LSAT. To learn more about the course and hear about how it was made, please watch the announcement video that I'm going to link at the end of this one. As a bonus announcement, I have also launched a website that you can check out for the first time ever right now. It's linked in the description below. You can visit me at lifeasalawstudent.weebly.com. Your girl is cheap, so make sure you get that whole thing because I did not want to pay for an actual domain. But you can go there to connect more with me to learn more about this LSAT prep course and to see more resources that I'm beginning to offer and recommend for you. Although I still hope you are very blessed, I will not be signing off at the end of this video because I seriously am encouraging you to go ahead and watch the next announcement video I also uploaded today. Again, it's gonna be linked in just a second. I created this video as a part two for this one where you can hear from both me and Steve about that prep course. I'm so, so excited for you guys to finally see what we've been up to. And I urge you to consider taking advantage of it if taking the LSAT is anywhere in your future. And if you are watching this video later than July 2019, don't worry, rest assured that the course is still available for you as well. All you have to do is go below in the description. Everything you're gonna need is gonna be right there, including and especially the link to my website, which is where you can sign up for that course. Thank you guys so much. Make sure that you click right here to watch that next video and I'll see you over there.